What's the deal with Aquaman? What's the deal with decaf? What's the deal with lampshade? What's the deal with... What's the deal with the yellow vest movement? <laughs> oh, yeah. You have a bee in your bonnet about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know enough I'm about so glad you said experience. something about it on Facebook, by the way, because I was driving on the Albert Street Bridge, and I was like, who are all these fuckers? Oh, uh-huh. Corey, t- Corey talked about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Corey has a hate on for them. Uh, we, yeah. we, we know people who are like mutual friends on Facebook who right eh? yellow vesters yeah like the yellow vest movement or movement des gilets jaunes uh, is a populist grassroots movement for economic justice that started in France in November of last year 2018 it was mostly made of a up of working class people mm-hmm. and the movement was known for its concerns over high fuel prices and the high cost of living which made life more difficult for the working class. Uh, They called for and are still calling for lower fuel taxes, more taxation on the wealthy, minimum wage increases, and Macron's resignation from his role as president of France. In France, it is generally considered a leftist movement, but also has some people within it who claim to be on the right or who voted for far-right candidates. The protests are considered by many to be positive in nature and impact, calling those in power to account and disrupting things as much as necessary to make the government take notice of them and to do to do change things, <laughs> to make things change. Uh, they wear the yellow vests as a symbol because since 2008 in France, by law, all motorists are required to have high-vis vests in their vehicles while driving. They are reasonably inexpensive and easily recognizable. So make for an easy symbol. Uh, about the the politics of the French movement, um, the it's a broad movement with supporters from across the political spectrum, but a group of journalists looked at the Yellow Vest's 42 directives and came to the conclusion that about two-thirds of them were closer to the radical left positions than other political groups. and But about half of them could also be compatible with far-right viewpoints because they, populism happens on both sides of the political spectrum. Um, almost all of the directives were about as far from centrists or liberals as one can get. <laughs> they were all extreme left or extreme right. Or, well, extreme. Extreme left for most of them. After looking at an article on Le Monde and uh, scrolling through the different directives and seeing which political leaders would be on the board with them, I would say that beyond anything, the French yellow vests, French yellow vests are an anti-centrist movement that is specifically concerned with the troubles that working class people face. It's uh, anti-neoliberalism in a lot of ways. Uh, of course, these, the, the similarity to my own views uh, seems to fade away once you go into other countries. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, in, well, Belgium isn't too bad. There isn't too uh, different. Like they're still concerned with the same things as the French movement. Uh, apparently, the prices of fuel in Belgium are even more expensive than in France. And then this these carbon taxes are going to hit them uh, even more. It said, uh, the article I read said that the price of fuel in Belgium was 2.1 times the price of fuel in France. Wow. wow. So, I mean, uh, which is more expensive than it is here. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> so, I'm sure. So, yeah, it, it really hurts people when the price of fuel goes up in those countries. One thing I noted about Belgium was that they actually have a law against hooliganism, they oh. called it, <laughs> which is supposedly uh, an, uh, a, supposed to deter protests, violent protests, but uh, whether or not it's effective is still <laughs> being figured out, I guess. In the UK, uh, in London, the leader of the Yellow Vest movement there was a- arrested uh a couple weeks ago before being released the next day and for like uttering threats and, Uh and uh, kind of, I don't know, the things he was saying sounded like he was planning on starting a war 
with, <laughs> with the rest of the citizens. Hmm. Um, and he, he, they seem to have a lot of far right anti-immigrant and pro-Brexit uh, ideas in their Yellow Vest movement. Uh, there is a smaller movement right now in, in London that is trying to take the, the symbol of the Yellow Vest back for the left side, left side of the political spectrum. Confusing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> there are, like I said, like Yellow Vests in a number of countries – and they all have different nuances and and uh, vary in their political ideas. Mm. Uh, obviously, I got I'm not a fan of the Canadian ones. Uh, <laughs> tell us why. <laughs> yeah, they are uh, anti-immigrant, pro-pipeline, anti-Trudeau. Uh, they tend to blame Justin Trudeau for every problem in society, and they want him tried for treason and hung. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he can't be responsible for handsomeness. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? True. That's true. Just born that way, right? So handsome. <laughs> <laughs> They're also incredibly Islamophobic. Like, actually Islamophobic. Not the, I criticize Islamic doctrine, but brown people are scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's, they hate Jagmeet Singh. And it's not because they actually know anything about him. They think he's a Muslim. Because they don't know the difference between a Sikh and a Muslim. <sighs> <laughs> All they really know is that he's got brown skin and isn't Christian. Uh, the Canadian Yellow Vest movement has also been tied to leaders of various white supremacist groups and fascist groups like the Sons of Odin. In their Facebook group, they regularly talk about killing Justin Trudeau and sharing fake news while complaining about non-white immigrants, indigenous people, and other people of color. How do you not get, like, arrested for uttering threats against... Well... Oh, A, anybody, but B, <laughs> especially, like, the prime minister. I'm not sure how you avoid it, but so far... I mean, the RCMP is looking, is watching their... Oh, okay. Their Facebook group, but they haven't arrested anybody. I guess, do you need to have like a credible threat? Like I'm going to yeah. show up here one day and do this. Or if it's like something related to bombs, if you're just like randomly kill this person and without specifying your method, you can get away with <laughs> right. it. Is that? Yeah, I think there's, right. yeah, I think it's stuff Noted. like that. <laughs> so essentially their Facebook group is a bullshit factory of racist shit bags <laughs> to complain about <laughs> all things progressive, leftist or liberal. Uh, in Saskatchewan, we have had yellow vests that block roads with their diesel trucks in Estevan. In Regina, they walk around with anti-immigration signs. And in Weyburn, they stood on the side of the road and waved to supporters because Weyburn is a shitty town <laughs> and everybody fucking agrees with them. Uh, <laughs> there are some pages uh, devoted to keeping on top of uh, what's going on. There's the, uh, what is it? Uh, yellow Vests Exposed or Canadian Yellow Vests Exposed Facebook page and Twitter account and the Canadian Anti-Racist Coalition is uh, keeps an eye on them quite a bit. Uh, beyond that, I think most places in the world have a mixture of right and left political ideas in their Yellow Vest movements and with the intent or possibly uh, the effect of changing things for the benefit of the working class and a couple places have to have accidentally or intentionally let the far right take it over completely and co-opt the message. The UK has a counter movement and we do not. <laughs> so Is there one in the states? There was nothing that I could find. Oh, cuz yeah, I hadn't heard anything either, but you got just They've got enough problems. <laughs> yeah. They're just yeah. they're, they're they're saturated. <laughs> they're done. Yeah. yeah. I guess they don't need yellow vests. They just They wear red hats. Yeah, yeah red I hats. guess. Yeah, that's okay. Good point. Like, yeah, I just <laughs> like I truly don't understand how anybody is anti-immigrant in this country cuz like our immigration is merit-based and quite strict. Like yeah. again, after having conversations with Somebody who was like, whatever, I sent them the like scoring system and said like, I'm curious whether you would make it into Canada. And I did my <laughs> score based on what I knew about them. I'm like, I don't think you would actually. Right. So you're complaining about immigrants. Theoretically, they're all better than you <laughs> on paper at least. Right. So it's like, right. I feel like you could be against immigration if you're First Nations. 
hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I don't, you know, because but I, like, even just the argument yeah. that, well, you know, my, I mean, my gra- grandfather was the first person in his family born in this country. Yeah. So he, because mom was pregnant with him on the ship over Right. Here. Yeah. So like. Oh, no. Yeah, like, with that, I better not I'm, be talking against immigrants because I mean, but you know what? I don't, and maybe I'm me. just, I just don't have an audience with them. But I don't hear them being the ones that complain when they have the most right to complain. It's oh all yeah, the no, white I know. Yeah, yeah they don't. But I'm just saying, like, it's yeah. just like other than First Nations. Yeah. People. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, we're yeah. all pretty new immigrants. I yeah. mean, like, no, I, really yeah. No... I'm, I'm referring to the people that I'm hearing that are constantly bitching about immigration. The people, like... uh, the, the people who are anti-immigrant uh, don't, don't think that we're like immigrants though. They think no. that we're Canadians and that this is Canadian yeah. land and they don't even acknowledge that it was ever indigenous land at all. No, and in, and even when you say like, well, you're all immigrants, like, well, that was back then, but now it's bad. Yeah, but it, was like, like, it wasn't not even that long years ago. ago. <laughs> it was like yes, seventy years true. ago. Like, and how or less, is it a lot of people. Any different? Know. We still have a shit ton of space, and you know, like a pretty low population yeah. density. Well, for does our how big economy our not is. rely on immigration? Hundred yes. percent. Like yes. we don't have enough children yeah. to support. Like we need immigrants, and that's just that so like what what is what is your (laughs) alternative or what's your like yeah Yeah. i don't think because it's just you know like the person i was talking to he's like well their children don't speak english and they're all in the school so now nobody's gonna learn how to speak english properly because no i grew up in northeast calgary i can tell you straight up all children who move here what happens in my experience is people come here and as soon as your children kind of mix in with everyone else you just i mean they keep some of their values and some of their family traditions and it's lovely and you get like the best curry but then you also get you know a moderating influence from canadian culture like it it mix it you know like so then you know they want to whatever not have an arranged marriage or whatever it may be. And then, and you know, it doesn't take very many generations before people are largely integrated, but still actually keep a nice, like yeah. a, a good, good, like their culture as, as well. Like it's most, nice. It's as lovely. a lot of us have. Like and that's, we still that's eat traditionally pierogies. how it's, like, yeah, exactly. Exactly how <laughs> it's been in Canadian? Canada. Is that Canadian? What's, you know. Exactly. Like, I was the first one in my family born in Canada and I don't feel like I'm, Struggling to integrate. <laughs> right, eh? No, you're, you're I don't know, Mr. Okay. Dr. Pepper. That looks pretty Chilean oh, to me. Oh, geez. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't mention it. Uh, a lot of times when you uh, talk to these people or you listen to them, they're, they're ca- talking about Canadian values. They always like to do the, the are, dog whistle of that Canadian values. Acceptance and... <laughs> I feel like a lot of these people have just literally like never met a Muslim or never right. met, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. whereas like I grew up, I mean, like I said, being in the Northeast, I mean, you know, I ran for student council as vice president and the, my co, co-runner was, was a Muslim guy. And, right. you know, like it was just, we just, we, I don't know. This is just how it is. You just integrate. <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't know. I've known lots of Muslims and lots of Sikhs and lots of Hindus. Yeah, I went and lots to Catholic of- school. So I knew a bunch of Catholics and like <laughs> people that were <laughs> right. close enough to Catholic. But even to, if you go to Catholic school, you know lots of immigrants. The school. Filipinos, holy crap, right? Like, yeah. There's so know, many Catholic Filipinos. Pretty, they, are, they are supporting the Catholic white. Church. Man. Some really of the, uh, some of the Facebook Calgary, pages dude. that support the Saskatchewan and Canadian Yellow Vest movement are also like pretty bad with the conspiracy theories and like they they talk about George Soros and they have the globalist dog whistle are. and and like, like why does all of that shit just go hand in hand like why do you got to be a nutcase in like every facet of life cuz racism is pseudoscience and it's based on I guess yeah that okay that like, makes perfect sense never mind. <laughs> I'll shut my damn up <laughs> No it's it's something that like those overt racists, those white supremacists, that's... They, yeah, they believe that we are better than yeah. you and... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they they actually believe in the myth of genetic superiority. Well, because, like, nobody has a problem. Like, if, if 
I came over here and I had an Australian accent and I said him as an immigrant, no one would be like, oh, I'm against immigrants, right? <laughs> right. Like no one's against those immigrants. No, that's right. So it's, just, it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not an immigration thing. That they're against, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's not, not a immigrants not are taking our Irish. job thing. It's, I read an interesting article I don't like brown people. a few years ago now. It was that white people actually even get a special name if they're an immigrant. They call themselves, you call, you call yourself an expat. If you're white and you're, uh, if you, if you yeah. go to another country, you, you're, you, you know, if you, like I had lots of friends who called themselves expats, I'm like, oh, I lived in, in Abu Dhabi, for, you know, for three years. And my dad worked there and yeah, we were expats. I'm like, what the fuck is that? An expat's just a white immigrant. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That makes sense. Because yeah. white people have to have a special. <laughs> white people get a special be name special. for being immigrants. <laughs> we're so boring. We need to be special somehow. You gotta be just special. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it is largely, like, about the framing, right? Like, if we use this name for the white ones, then we can make them different. Yeah. We can say, oh, well, these well, ones immigrant are good. Means, like, it's, it's like when, remember when Hurricane <laughs> Katrina happened and people were talking about the refugees coming out of uh, out of New Orleans, right? Right. And, like, um, and, and everyone, all the Americans that were up in arms, like, we don't have refugees in, in, in the United States. Well, actually, no, this is what a refugee is. Like, you think of refugees as people you don't give a shit about, which is why you want to call these people <laughs> right. refugees. But yeah. actually, refugees is a person who'd rather not fucking be there. Right? Yeah. They want to be at home. Uh, yeah. That's what that is. they can't be for whatever right. reason. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that word applies, and actually you just need more compassion for the refugees, not <laughs> yeah. finding yeah. a different word for your refugees. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that would be interesting. 